Right, I'm back from my holidays, and of course I have been replenishing my uh, eBay stocks. So I'm going to show you a few bits and pieces. Now, this guy is exactly who it says on the tin. You've probably never heard of him, however. And reason being, he comes from a comic series called Planetary. And although he was sold by DC Direct, he was actually a sort of a wild storm kind of imprint. And he is associated very loosely with another series called The Authority and Stormwatch. You may have heard of these. They have been integrated, as I understand it, into the overall kind of DC universe now. Um, but this guy was like, he's not really a superhero as such. These guys are, they're more like sort of, they're like an Indiana Jones MacGyvery sort of team, but for the unexplained. So they're kind of like the X-Files, but they're super powered. So um, I haven't actually looked at them for, for quite a while, the actual comics, and I'm going to do a separate video on comics because what I really enjoyed was the fact that they did these crossovers with the authority from time to time, but also with other DC-based characters as well, which is hilarious. Um, because the, the characterization on these guys was just just brilliant. Um, really, really funny. Warren Ellis did the um, at least the early strips. And um, just a really, really interesting character set, really interesting stories as well. If you think of things like The Twilight Zone, it was those sorts of stories, a little bit spooky, a little bit eerie, Lovecraftian at times. So it's, it's a really interesting one. If you ever sort of spot it, have a look at it because it's um, it's, it's well worth it. But I just like the fact this is the, the, the drummer. Um, he had the ability to sort of interface with, with IT, basically, of various flavours. So I uh, just got a hold of him. You'll notice that this, you may not, I don't know if you can see this, but this plastic is very typical of plastic that has been overexposed to sunlight, very yellowy. Inside, the figure himself is probably fine because this acts as a kind of barricade against UV, which is what's done damage to this plastic, probably. Um, we were having this chat on um, the Cosmic Council the other day, actually, about exactly what does cause plastic to go yellow. And we're not sure if it was a combination of UV accelerating a process that occurs anyway over time. Probably very dependent on the plastic type as well, but um, unfortunate. But for me personally, it gets me an example of it. So I'm not too worried about the overall um, sort of clarity of the actual box itself. Um, another figure I, I picked up was this one. Now, I do have a fondness for Trek, which so I have a fondness for Babylon 5. And I've also developed a great deal of appreciation for um, Art Asylum and Diamond Select toys, figures. You know, call them what you will. But um, this chat was quite interesting because I thought it was somewhat ironic because he's a Herogen. If you know the Herogen from Star Trek Voyager, they were hunters. Unfortunately, this guy clearly didn't think twice before hunting a Borg. So he's got himself assimilated and he's de his designation is two of three. And uh, the other ones in the series are a Klingon and a Cardassian. Um, so, you know, if you want to collect the set, you can collect the set. But um, he's, a real, he's got a real weight to him. Um, again, very yellowy case, slightly damaged case. But again, I'm after the figure rather than the box. So um, I just like the, the look of him. He looks suitably imposing. Got a huge um, sort of prosthetic arm attachment going on. And I would, I would imagine that he's some sort of tactical Borg, logically, because you know, they'd make an excellent um, adaption for that, I would think. So just quite interesting to see that. I don't think I'd ever really noted that Arthur Sullivan had done figures. I knew they did ships, but I didn't know they'd done figures. So again, just a, an interesting one to, to pick up and just a nice another example of, a, of an action figure. Both of those, I should say, are much more modern than I normally go for, because that's not in my sort of toy era at all. But because I have a comics penchant and, you know, I do get Star Trek stuff as well, as per my Eagle Moss collection, I just thought they'd be quite interesting to get hold of those. On that same tune, Xena the Warrior Princess, Lucy Lawless, 
before her Battle Star Galactica and, and of course many other things days, I'm sure. Also think of poker player apparently. But um Xena was great. It's the sort of thing my dad and I both would have enjoyed. Um we both like the sort of sword and sorcery kind of epics from the um the, the sort of the mid eighties onwards. And Xena was really a sort of um, a TV series that followed in that vein. So I like the mythology of it. Um, and she did take on gods from time to time. And she had a really cool ring that she could throw, like Kroll Blade, that would come back to her, that called a Chakram. Um, and this, as you can see, has a little, a little Chakram there. Um, she got an upgrade for it, actually, later in the series as well, where, where it could split in two. Um, so, yeah, it's, um, apparently there are... Looks like there are about seven... Oh, no, there's a, so there's a 12-inch collector's series and a 6-inch collector's series. I assume this is a 6-inch one from the size, yes. Um, but I've seen, I've seen this before. It's a Toy Biz, um, Toy Biz release. I've seen it before, and, I, and again, it was one of these ones where it just happened to sort of pop up on my um, searches on this, this particular seller on eBay, and I thought it would be, it would be rude not to. I do have a cunning plan. Um, the other day, I spotted a Captain Dylan Hunt... And you may recall that was one Kevin Sorbo. You can see where I'm going with this. Um, that isn't actually where I'm going with this at all. But as it happens, Kevin Sorbo was the captain of that particular starship. And I thought it might be interesting to get um, a collection of captain figures. Because um, I've already got Captain Nathan Bridges from Sequest. And I think that was kind of what, what made me think about that. I thought, yeah, what if I could get a few sort of captains of, um, you know, sort of make-believe starships and the like. Um, so that might be a, 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 a random one because I do tend to go cross series quite broadly when I'm trying to collect stuff. You know, I get I get bits and bobs here and there, so I thought I might do that. Now, this next one was one that really sort of piqued my interest, and again, I wasn't looking for it, but eBay chucked it at me. So this is um, a tin plated toy. Now. I saw these a little while ago in an antiques store, um, not too far from Leeds. Uh, this is a great flying boat. And I just looked at the, the, the images and I just thought, you know, I would have really liked that as a kid. Really would have liked that as a kid because it just looks cool. And what's interesting about it, and I haven't even, I haven't even got this out to look at yet. So this is literally the first time I'm looking at this, but um, it seems to be quite sort of um, Chinese originally, I think. It was made in China, but it's got a few different languages on it. But what I love about this is that, and it is in really good condition, he, just, he did say it was. What I love about this is that because it's tin, it doesn't have the sort of detailing that you get with plastic. Now look at that. It's not really heavy. It's not massively heavy, but it is metal. And what makes me smile about this is that the impact that it has on you visually is all down to the painting. I like I like the sort of classic rocket ship kind of styling of it with that sort of tapered, the tapered nose at the front end sort of tapering, tapering back to the back as well. But then they've got these wheels sort of slightly hidden by these um, sort of nacelle bits on, on the back there. But the whole thing looks like it would be aerodynamic. It looks fast. Even with this great big visor at the front, but even that makes a certain amount of sense because you'd want to protect the pilot. Um, and this sort of thing, I don't know, it just it just really struck me as a terrifically sort of old-fashioned kind of toy, and yet also really, really sort of timelessly stylish. Um, I'm not sure if I'm really explaining myself very well, but I think you get the you get the general gist. So I just thought I'd give one a go, really, because as I say, it's quite it's quite a big thing as well. Um, I've just ne I've never never ever had one. Never even thought to really buy one. I say I saw them, you know, I saw them on the shelves, and I half thought about it. But okay, it's friction based as well. There's definitely a little bit of friction going on there. Okay, it goes in both directions as well. I'm not entirely sure if it's supposed to be that loud, so apologies, but. Um, I don't really know where to go from here. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got no idea if they're really worth anything. Um, I've got no idea if you collect them, um, if they are collectible. But I, it's one of those ones where it was just a bit of an impulse buy, really. Um, which, of course, eBay is very, very good at making you do. But it's in really nice, it's in nice shape. The paint looks really good. Um, yeah, I mean, I can't, you know, I can't knock it for, for a random eBay purchase. I rather like that. Um, 
as a concept as, as well as everything else. So if you know anything about those, do let me know in the comments because I am, I am sort of interested by that. Um, on a completely random note now, I've got this. Um, I only picked it up because it said it had a free Zoids comic inside. Um, I wasn't hunting for it. Again, it's one of these random ones that I found. But this has got, um, it's got Machine Man in it. I remember Machine Man from the Transformers UK comic. I don't know if you remember him at all. He's been through a few iterations, but I think this is the one I remember. Where he was a bit sort of pinky. He had sort of extendable limbs and stuff like that. He looks a bit angrier in this episode than I remember him being. But um, as I half suspected, this, it's got this Zoids comic inside it. But what's curious about this is that I've seen this promotional comic before in an issue of Secret Wars, but this comic is dated January 1985, which I'm fairly confident is a lot earlier than some of the other um, Zoids adverts that I've seen. So I think this actually predated the Secret Wars one, which in turn predated the Zoid strip itself. So this might have been one of the really early examples of that Zoid's comic being used to advertise the toy line, probably when it was just starting to come out. So I'm going to sort of carbon date that at another, an, another time. So I've, got, um, I've got something else coming, which I'll, I'm going to be showing you in, in due course, but it hasn't come yet. So now this one, this one again, completely random pickup. Um, this was one of the first BBC B games I ever owned growing up, Snapper. Yeah, it's Pac-Man. Yeah, it's Snapper. Um, and at that point in time, you can see there were a grand total of three other Acorn Soft games. There was Arcade Action, Meteors, and Rocket Raid. Um, I think another one that was I had early was Frogger. And then came things like Starship Command, which were uh, much more complicated than, than this. But I have very, very fond memories of playing this on my first BBC B at home in the very early 80s. And I was a very lucky boy to have one because not many people had BBC Bs at home. They weren't cheap by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but lots of schools had them. And the idea was they were supposed to be your sort of educational in to the world of computers, which my parents lapped up um, hook, line and sinker from the school. And then I ended up being the one in school who knew most about them. Go figure. What else have we got? I know, you've never heard of it, right? Well, you have actually, because, uh, or you may have done, because it did actually, um, to, they, this sword as an organisation, I believe, turned up in um, the Scarlet Witch series. But this isn't, I don't think this is that sword, this is much earlier. But the reason I picked this up was because I'd known about it for a while. And if I can find an appropriate page, it's, suddenly you will appreciate perhaps why I hunted for this. Now, remember him? Freelance peacekeeping agent, yes? Death's Head. Completely random appearance of Death's Head, not looking a lot like Death's Head. But as you may be aware from this channel, I have a little bit of a penchant for all things Death's Head and sort of Jeff scenery and all that sort of good stuff. But this is him showing up in a more mainstream Marvel continuity, which he does do from time to time because he is a Marvel character. Um, they made very sure when they introduced him, they brought him out in his own strip in Transformers UK first, so that Marvel got the copyright on him rather than Hasbro getting it. So they were very, very clever about that. Um, so as a result, Death's Head is actually part of Marvel continuity. And um, rather than trying to get all the individual issues of this, I realised it was going to be much, much more straightforward to get the graphic novel version, which is what you what, what, what I have there. Um, I still haven't sat and read it, but he's in there, definitely. What else? Well, what else indeed? Now this. This is not what I wanted to buy, but I bought it anyway. The reason I bought it is because I think it's a clue. What I want is the rifle version of this, which is much bigger. But this has a lot in common with the bigger one, which I believe is a Toytronic electronic phase four laser rifle. That's what I think its name is. Can I find it on eBay? Can I? Heck is like. 
haven't had it, haven't, haven't had any joy whatsoever. Been hunting for quite a while now, and I am very dogged with these things, as you might imagine, but I have not been able to find it. Now, why might you ask, am I looking for this? And that is an excellent question. I, by the way, I rather like the box art. Because he's actually got box art for starters. For a little toy space gun, it's actually got box art. It's got a spaceship on the front of it that's properly painted. I mean, I actually quite appreciate that as a little sort of detail. So we slide that out. Now, this is this is a classic 80s packaging technique. Um, I, this is how my die X came when I got my die X. Very much into the polystyrene. And then you, you lift a little lid off. And it's quite a good way of sandwiching it and protecting it. And this is what it looks like. But it's not the biggest thing, as you can see. The, you say, the, obviously, the rifle version is much bigger. But um, it's quite noisy. Ready? Right. That is... Uh, I think I want to say that's machine... No, that's laser, actually, strangely. Yeah, that's, that's laser. This is death ray. Wow. Yeah, that's... that's well, it's deafening grey, not sure about death ray, but anyway, um, this is a machine gun. Oh, sorry. Um, but what I want is one that has virtually identical styling, has a dial, but is much, much longer in, in, in both directions and has a sort of proper kind of stock on it for your shoulder. Um, I have very, very fond memories of using that in like a, um, school play as a kid. Um, you know, it was, was my weapon of choice for quite a while, but that would have been very early 80s. Um, and yet, this I was able to find. The problem is, searching on eBay for laser guns, it takes a while. It requires a lot of effort because there's a very generic term, lots of them turn up. But very pleased to have found this. And I still need to look at the box in detail to see if I can get any sort of clue um, as to what... It may be that I'm not searching under the right name. So if you recognise what I'm talking about when I describe a bigger version of this, do let me know again. I think it came out in the States in silver. I've seen it on another video um, from another channel in silver, which I've never seen before. But in, in the UK, the one that I had was white and black, just like that, but bigger. Um, what else have I got? Um, I got picked up this, not realising it was one of those ones where I've already got it. And I do now have um, several Detolf units from Ikea which I'm going to be using to actually display stuff in so I can tell what I've already got so I don't duplicate things. Um, this is the Batmobile from the Batman animated series of the early 90s. Um, and it, although I actually have a slightly better boxed, you know, an, a cleaner box version of this, what I didn't get with that one was this, which is the um, the magazine that Eagle Moss released with it. And again, I haven't read this in, in massive detail yet, but... I'm already a fan of it, given that it's got this enormous, and I do mean enormous, um, four-page pull-out spread of uh, a dedicated sort of cutaway of the, this particular Batmobile. Um, so this came out after the 89 movie, but I think it does inherit some characteristics of that Batmobile um, in, you know, the sort of the twin fin styling, very smooth over the top but it's much longer and it fitted in perfectly with the, the design dynamic. Um, nice, nice blueprint there as well. Nice little schem uh, side schematics, but it fits in beautifully with the, the design style of that animated series. And I did love that animated series. It was really, it was quite dark for a kid's show. It wasn't as happy, clappy and as sort of garishly bright as a lot of the, the more modern ones are. So it was properly a kind of dark night kind of version of the series, even though it was animated. Um, I also picked up this, and this confused the hell out of me initially. And then I remembered that um, being a, a Japanese magazine, it doesn't go in the direction you expect it to. Because they don't read left to right, they read right to left. So when, you, when I did that, it didn't make any sense because that was the back of it. So actually what you do is you start with the back cover up first, and you work through it in this direction. And again, I haven't looked at this in massive detail, but what's nice about it is that it's got quite a few quite interesting drawings um, of the show that I haven't seen before. And I believe that this is because it's, it takes some of its imagery from an exhibition that was held in Japan, um, which went, which 
had a lot of recreations of the original Starfleet slash X-Bomber um, ships and characters because sadly they all got destroyed in a fire um, shortly after the series originally wrapped so we don't actually have them anymore but what we do have is as I say is it, it, are these recreations um, that were shown in this exhibition I mean I didn't get across for it but, but you know it's um, a lot of people did and there are there is a, again another very nice printed um, volume I believe that, that sort of you know that, that, sh that shows off all the all the, the various items in the exhibition so um, I haven't actually got hold of that yet but I'm sure I could do if I if I so chose and I'm gonna have a look through that at some point and um, and just have a good a good sort of delve and finally um, last little random pickup just so I could do a uh, three and thirty sort of payment on um, on PayPal got a little um, Hoff Luke Skywalker now, I am not setting out to collect Star Wars figures. I'm definitely not setting out to complete to get complete Star Wars figures because they're really, really expensive. But I do have these little, um, you, you probably can't see it in the picture, but I have these little sort of rails that go along some of my walls. And they do allow Star Wars figures, old school Star Wars figures at any rate, to sit on them quite, to stand on them quite nicely. So I've, I've sort of this sort of rather random collection of the odd loose Star Wars figure, which is, is, is going to sort of gradually go grow over time, it would appear. Um, so I've um, I've just added this loop because I've got the um, the Han Solo from Hoth as well. So I thought I felt it would be rude not to. So that was a quick whistle stop tour of what was for me quite an eclectic mix of pickups. Um, I've got some more videos coming. I've got uh, some pickups from Cosmic Toys. Um, and I've also got a video on um, Gareth's shop. So I will uh, get that up fairly soon now, I think. But I do want to do a, a video of the pickups that I did from there as well. So they kind of go out at the same time. So that's it from me for now. Do like and subscribe as ever. I thank you. And I really, really wish that the thunder and lightning would come so that the air was a little bit cleaner. But that appears to be wishful thinking because it just won't happen tonight, it seems. So cheers for now and I'll catch you again soon.